My name is Lyle Murphy, the founder of the Alternative to Med Center, and today's video is going to be about why cannabis can cause psychosis in certain individuals. Um, I have a list of questions that our readers have asked me to try to address. The first question is, is there a link between marijuana use and psychiatric disorders? There certainly is a very strong correlation between psychosis and marijuana use. Um, when someone is being interviewed by me or by other people <clears throat> at our center, and they've had history of being on antipsychotics, um, especially when they've had periods of being normal mixed with periods of psychosis, one of the first questions is, are you a marijuana smoker? And oftentimes the answer is yes. Not always, but <clears throat> many times it is yes. And um, we have long since correlated um, this phenomenon to just certain types of genetic hands. And there is some evidence out there to support certain things. But I think a common example would be um, with alcohol. Like there's some people who can metabolize alcohol really well. Um, my Irish genetics um, would allow me to drink and, and get drunk at a normal you know, level of drinks, um, which I don't drink, but um, a Native American or maybe a Japanese person, their genetics don't have the CYP2E1. And, and when they drink alcohol, instead of it converting <clears throat> from ethanol into aldehyde, it, it can't make that jump real well. So it gets stuck at, at ethanol and one, two drinks can get them very, very extremely drunk. Now, alcohol is a solvent, and a solvent will break down and become water-soluble in your system so that you can eliminate it. However, cannabinoids are oil-based, and for those familiar with drug testing would know that if you smoke marijuana, you can test dirty on a, on a urine drug screen for up to 30 days, and that's a normal person. So <clears throat> converting this oil or fat compound into a water-soluble form really does take enzymes in order to be able to facilitate that. And oil and water just don't mix. So you're not going to pee this stuff out very well if you don't have the enzymatic ability genetically to be able to break this down. And certain people <clears throat> don't have that. There is a, um, a genetic genotype which has been noted in all of this. This is called the COMT, which stands for catecholamine methyl transferase. Um, it's the valine 158 methionine um, genotype. And those with, so you can either have the valine or you can have the methionine in, in, in this position. People with the double valine uh, are actually 10 times more likely to be able to have a reaction to smoking marijuana than those with the methionine uh, uh, in that same place. So <clears throat> these type of what they call alleles um, can determine how we're going to react to marijuana. And um, the next question here is, does cannabis cause psychosis? Um, enough THC will cause anyone to be psychotic. If you... Uh, I've heard that there was even some chemical warfare ideas that had been tested out where they sprayed um, very highly concentrated THC on uh, military personnel, and they were so whacked out they couldn't fight. <clears throat> but does cannabis, does everyone get psychotic from smoking cannabis? No. Just like not everyone gets drunk off of one shot of alcohol, it really depends on your genetics. And... My personal opinion is, is that if you don't have the genetics to, to, to metabolize marijuana and it makes you psychotic, then you should not smoke marijuana. It, 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 it would seem to be that simple, but um, getting that message across to our younger population who really just wants to be like all their friends and be able to smoke pot and drink beer and eat pizza and, and, and have a different genetics and don't fit into that um, same crowd uh, struggle socially to be able to, um, you know, fit in and um, have a completely different reaction to the marijuana. <clears throat> um, 
Next question, how long does THC psychosis last? That is dependent on the individual. It can last days, weeks, or even months. And again, if you're not able to move this out of your system, you're basically still high until you can. And so the psychosis from this can last a significant amount of time. And it gets, it gets misdiagnosed. So um, there are a lot of people who have come through our doors who have been diagnosed as schizophrenic or another schizo, schizoid, like schizoaffective uh, diagnosis. And really, it's just, it's just marijuana-induced psychosis. When they take a break from their marijuana and um, you know, they, they start to normalize and act like normal kids. Um, and I think it's important to know this because carrying around a heavy diagnosis and being medicated for that heavy diagnosis, when the real problem is you just don't have the genes to metabolize marijuana, can be quite a cross to bear for your life. Antipsychotics are the most potent class of medications to get put on, especially if you're a young adult. Um, next question, what are the symptoms of cannabis-induced psychosis? They're uh, nearly identical to um, any sort of psychosis. It can be hearing voices. It can be having hallucinations, audio, uh, audio or visual hallucinations, paranoia. Um, it will look exactly like the manic or psychotic uh, mental diagnoses. <clears throat> of course, there's a bit of a timing thing around this. Like, you just smoked pot, and basically you didn't come down the next day like your friends. Um, next question, how, can, <clears throat> how is cannabis-induced psychosis treated? Well, to accelerate it, you want to biotransform the fat-soluble uh, cannabinoids into a water-soluble form. And here we do things that are called biotransformation, in other words, we add things like niacin, vitamin C, um, sometimes lithium orotate to the person to kind of help get the process started. And then we add conjugating elements that help uh, either methylate or sulfonate it into a water-soluble form. So that's how we treat it. Um, of course, the, the real entry point is you have to stop smoking pot and uh, stop, you know, building up the THC levels in your body. And um, uh, once a person does that, you know, they would naturally over time start to um, have an alleviation of symptoms, but there are ways to accelerate that. So I hope this um, has given you enough information to understand that, you know, some people can smoke pot and some people can't. Uh, the legalization of marijuana comes with um, a backbite of now making it highly available to people who really are going to have potentially hospitalizations or even worse, um, you know, incidences of mental health consequences that other people who are um, promoting it aren't necessarily considering, you know, like if one person can smoke pot and they can go to work and they have, you know, that's a completely different type of persona than a person who smokes pot and ends up stepping off of a, of a top of a parking garage or something because they think they can fly. Uh, there's a lot of times a conversation with someone who's experiencing this is um, a bit sticky because uh, marijuana is a very full spectrum um, plant. There's certain cannabinoids that actually alleviate anxiety, that diminish pain, and then there's the psychoactive version, right? So all that's kind of combined in one plant. So the same people that may be going psychotic from the marijuana may also believe that it helps them with their anxiety. Well, it does help them with their anxiety in that moment, but they're building up a psychoactive compound that they can't get out of their system to a level which will produce psychosis. So unfortunately, these people have to choose um, something different in order to be able to mediate their anxiety. CBD with very low THC content, 0.3% or below, um, is probably good for most of these folks. I have seen people go psychotic just off of CBD. 
um, typically people who really super overdo it. But, um, you know, it's a matter of also getting that person to understand, you know, if you're, if you're smoking, it's kind of like if you're drinking decaf coffee, the temptation is to drink real coffee, right? So if you're smoking um, CBD, and the temptation is like, oh, let's just smoke the, the real thing. So um, if a person can wrap their head around that really what they're looking for is the sedating effects for the um, anxiolytic effects, then they probably should, uh, you know, try using CBD instead of something that has a psychoactive component, component that causes them psychosis. Well, thank you very much, and um, we'll see you hopefully on the next video, and have a good day or night.